the progress that a nation makes, it is not because of the good of the ruling party. It is because of the vigilance of the opposition. Nigeria, in every system of government, operates adversarial system, whether in law, whether in politics. And it's because of the belief that there is an inherent progress made when a thesis meets antithesis, then they bring out synthesis. When something jams the opposite, they bring out a new thing. When a man meets a woman, they bring out a child. They may be 90 years old, but when they give birth to a child, the child will become a new baby. So whenever opposition is not virile in any system, that system will most likely derail. You know, Montesquieu said one thing that is very, very instructive. He said, anybody invested with power is apt to abuse it and carry his authority as far as he can go. He said, virtue, mark his word, virtue has to even have a limit so as it, good as it is. As good and as beautiful as it is. And the only thing that curtails the excesses of the ruling power in a democracy is the opposition. The people have entrusted their own fortune, their own sovereignty in the government, which is made up of the ruling party and the opposition. And they expect these two people to do different things. So they're not expecting the opposition to give them the dividends. They're expecting the opposition at least to say, because you have your say. So whenever the opposition is not pointing out the things that are bad or ways to make things better, they have failed. And democracy will be at risk in this country. You and I know that we are now in an era of a battered, bruised, bankrupted, and if I may use their own words, dead economy. I am not the one who said this. APC, who are you quoting? APC. I'm quoting APC. Hmm. President Bola Tinubu came in and said, I inherited a rotten financial system. And he made everybody to know what he's doing by taking the central bank governor of APC and putting him in jail without trial for hundreds of days. His national security advisor came on air and said, APC bequeathed to us a bankrupted economy. And you know the IG of police, when he went to the National Assembly, he said APC bequeathed to him a battered police force. Is it uh, the government of the last eight years or APC or... What do you call it? It's the ruling party. There is no independent candidacy in this country. You can only enter into governorship by a party. A party ought to have a manifesto and have the commensurate discipline to bring its elected officers mm. to implement their manifesto. You know, we run a presidential system of government. Yes. And in this presidential system, the president the symbol of the whole nation appear to, even in the US, I've seen the president move away from positions taken by the party, from state institution. So is it that it's peculiar to a presidential system where the president goes his own way because he's the man to be held responsible and not uh, driving a party manifesto or party program? I respectfully disagree with you because I know as a matter of fact that Tambo Mbeki was withdrawn from office by his party, not by the parliament. Mm. That is because they have party discipline. He came by the party, and the party should be supreme, not the president. Then when you go to America, they hold you responsible by the promise you made to the people, not by the promise your party made to the people, because that is their system there. So when you come to Nigeria, Nobody holds you accountable for anything. And accountability is one of 
the pillars that sustain democracy. Transparency, accountability, and all whatnot. Let me tell you the truth. When I joined politics, it was for one aim. To make Nigeria a superpower nation. And it is very, po very possible. Within a very short time. Why? A superpower nation stands on a tripod. Political stability, economic viability, and a strong military force. Through my learning, experience, and observation, I have known that these are the three things that ought to be in place. Nigeria has, in a potential manner, the things that will give us this. If we have a good leader mm -hmm. within just a decade, look at our solid minerals wasting away countries from around the world coming into Nigeria, using it to enrich their own people. Bandits and terrorists. You have your gold, you have your lithium, you have your bitumen, and then you have oil flowing like water. And you know what? A young man from Niger Delta will use a cup to scoop the oil that is even destroying his environment and to cook it, and he will go and snatch it from him and burn it. That's and the illegal refinery? Good. That is what you call it. Now, you, the government, will go and bring a ship and collect that same oil and pay the ship to take the oil to America, to Europe, and refine the oil there, and you pay the ship to bring it back to Nigeria, and you start selling it as refined crude. And you have been doing that for 30 years. It is impossible to have economic viability with such incompetent and dishonest leaders where you cannot even make an improvement on your own product. Okay, you, you talked about vigilance yeah. of the citizens. Absolutely. Vigilance of the political parties, especially yes. the opposition political yes. parties. I was, coming to, to, I was coming to it, on it yeah. because it comes under political stability. Political stability can only be guaranteed in a country that has free, fair, credible, and verifiable elections. It is not corruption that brings democracy down. Democracy has not promised you that from time to time, corrupt leaders cannot wangle their way in because there are men who knows how to de deceive people. What democracy promises you is that in such a situation, you will have an opportunity to vote them out. So whenever you can no longer have the opportunity to vote out corrupt leaders, that is when democracy is threatened, meaning democracy can never fail. But democratization is what fails. So the process so is more the important. The process has always been more important than the mm. result. So democratization is that process that brings about democratic rule. As long as that process is not tampered with, democracy does not fail. Because the sovereignty of the people, if a people vote somebody, they'll be willing to take whatever comes. Because they will say, it's our fault. Let's just wait for him in the next four years. So the duty of the opposition is to ensure first and foremost that democratization does not fail. That is why, for instance, I am of the opinion that the opposition so far has failed and failed woefully in Nigeria. Since when has this failure started? Is it of recent? From May 29, 2023. And I'm talking about, of course, you know it has failed from 999. I'm just talking about as in this regime. Good. Why am I saying so? A president in his inaugural speech committed an abuse of power, committed a desecration of rule of law. Ah, what do you mean by that? First subsidy is gone. Uh, it has a policy pronouncement. No. It falls within the powers mm -hmm. of the president. No. You may quarrel with the process, but he has the power no. to take executive decisions. The president has no power to appropriate any money to any issue in Nigeria. And once appropriated, he has no power to go against it. There is already a law, PIA, that said subsidy cannot go until the end of June. Mm. It is a law. The job of the president is to execute, to administer and implement the law. So what sh should have been the reaction of the opposition? The opposition should have immediately screamed. This is not a dictatorship. You were not elected 
to impose your will. There is a law already existing. You cannot even mention it. No, did, did, did that thing didn't come up from the opposition. Not it, as, as much at as... At all. At all. They were busy struggling for post in the National Assembly. Struggling. And then this same person came out and chose leaders for you. And none of them could scream. Today, the National Assembly is a photocopy of the executive. We used to say that uh, Senator Lawan is a rubber stamp. But now we have a photocopy. When What's the, the difference between the two? Rubber stamp is that I can stamp my authority on you. Mm. Photocopy is that you are me. Existing in another form. The, the argument, the counter is that yes. uh, there has to be a nation before mm. there's a political party. Yes. There's a national interest that supersedes and overrides individual and party interests. And when it is of national interest, you keep down party affiliations and go for the national interest. Good. The first national interest that should be upheld is that the opposition should take on the executive where they are doing good. The opposition will say, no, you would have done it better. When they're not doing good, you say, no, you are not doing it good. You ought to have done it good. When they go to better, you say best. When they go to best, you say your best is not good enough. <laughs> no, that is it. You have to keep that's improving. It. That's very interesting. So you have to be on the You have to keep improving. Because on the day you stop growing, you start mm. going down. So when the uh, government gets it perfectly well, what should the opposition do? The best is not good enough. <laughs> that's, or, or that's, they will relax. That is it. That, that would be like, you're, let's you're, bring down the roof on no, everybody. No, no, no. That is beautiful. When a man has the impression he has done all, mm. the next thing is to sleep. A man ought to continue improving. And by nature, once you stop growing, you can't stand still. You start going down. So the next, have you ever seen opposition? Do you know? Okay, let me give you an example. Barack Obama went to New Jersey when they had a hurricane that destroyed New Jersey. And it was Governor Chris Christie that was the governor then. And he was of the Republican. But Barack Obama did very good things to them. And he was praising Barack Obama. And the election was closed. Barack Obama did a very good thing. Because of that praise, 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 he fell out with his party. And today he has not recovered. Because the, the, the duty of the opposition is to keep the ruling party on its toes. He would have just said, oh, Mr. President, thank you very much, but this is not good enough. You know, just to make him to, to have a room to do more. But look at what is happening. A member of Labour Party, who is a member of the House of Reps, when he came in, when he attended the first meeting with the president, he came out and was more loquacious than even people of APC. Praising what the president did. Hey, 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 president, hey, hey, hey. And he'd be wondering, does this man even know what he is there for? His argument, I recall, was that uh, when elections are over, there's always a need to rally behind the president. I've raised it before. I don't know. I'm just hearing that the first would time. There, would there never be a time when partisanship should stop? Then stop partisan politics. If you want it to stop, then let's go for one party system. You are in partisan politics. You just call it partisan. Mm. And then you say you should stop. You want to go into a president who raised the price of fuel from 190 something to 600 and from the first day he's in office without making adequate arrangement, and you're saying he's doing well? So uh, in as much as we agree that the, uh, democracy or democracy is more of a process than the outcome, you insist opposition must also be a, a, a process continuously running alongside democracy. Exactly. For the sake of the people. I did not join politics to pander to the will of a political party or a politician, but to the will of the Nigerian people, who by now, they are expecting their nation to be a superpower nation. But, but you're a member of the Labour Party. Yes, I am. So are you indicting your own political parties that is not doing It is well? not even the party that is the issue, but the elected members. 
recall that the party, Labour Party, mm -hmm. came out publicly to disassociate themselves from the illicit and corrupt 165 million naira, whether it's bulletproof or... It's or, not bulletproof. I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. 165 million naira for each member of the National mm -hmm. Assembly. Labour Party said, no, this is corrupt. We don't need this thing now. Not one member of the elected persons of the Labour Party in the National Assembly rejected that or even vehemently condemned that in the House. So it's not even about party. But let me tell you, does it not suggest Labour Party... That, okay. We should not be exonerated completely. Yes, because they should, should have hold a means on to. They, they are the ones that sold the application your, from. Yes. Where, where you should have they? a means to discipline yeah. your members, or else you risk anarchy and you risk being irrelevant. That is what is happening to PDP. In 2015, recall that seven governors with Atiku Abubakar. Is it five out, of them or so? No, two later on came back. Seven walked out on the president. Two came back. they go square. Good. Two came back. Five left. Even out of that two, one confessed that he worked for the opposition against his own party in the presidential election. They collapsed PDP. PDP failed. Do you know that the party did not discipline them for that? You know what the party did? The party upgraded them, promoted them. And by 2019, the same set of people took over the party. That was what gave him petos to the five governors in 2023 mm. to work out any indiscipline that you do not punish will repeat itself this time around in a more grandiose star. You know why? Law, jurisprudentially, without sword, is my words. When you punish people, it is not because the government has the interest in inflicting injuries on its citizens, but for deterrence. Now, PDP accommodated in discipline, and they are reaping from it. Five governors walked out on them in 2023. Well, what would they have done? Because they, you know what? they, they walked out nothing. and left the party. So Which people? They, they did not leave what, the what party. Would have, the five governors that walked out in 2023 did not leave the party. I said it has graduated. The five governors in 2015. At no, least I mean left in 2015. That's, that's what I'm saying. I'm referring to 2015. Yes, they were not disciplined before they 2023, left. 2023, they, they didn't new do PDP anything. in 2015. It was when the courts did not agree with them that they could hijack PDP that they left. But in 2023, they did not even care to leave. The state. Pe perhaps the party opted to use other means of consultation, negotiation. <laughs> no. The party has sown a seed of indiscipline. Okay, we'll go on a break. And they are paying for it. When we come back from the break, uh, he will profess solutions to what he said is the post state of the opposition in Nigeria to stay with us. When the issues are critical, germane to Nigeria's democratic process, politicians can only be seen maybe on television by judges. They should not intermingle. Because once you intermingle, then you destroy the system. When the personalities are big, important to national discourse. When you reach certain stage of power and you demonstrate arrogance to the extreme, there's no other thing that will happen to you or to fall. When the developments are seemingly complex, confounding like a thousand-piece jigsaw, that's when we require bold, sound, an analytical mind to help put the pieces together. Jigsaw with Benga Arileba now showing Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1 p.m. on AIT. Jigsaw demystifying the issues. Thank you so much for staying with us. My guest, uh, Dr. Kenneth Okonfo, lawyer, uh, politician, and actor, has been with me. Uh, taking a look at the state of opposition in Nigeria. We are in agreement that for a democracy to thrive, you need a very opposition. Uh, he's of the view that the one in Nigeria has shown weakness uh, uh, leading to a possible one-party state. Are we far from it? Or is it a reality? We are is not it, even close. Is it what people, a rhetoric people are saying, one-party state? Is it possible in a democracy as robust as that of Nigeria? We are not even close to it yet. Mm. 
We're not even close to it. They're simply confessing to their incompetence and corruption. I'm talking about the opposition. The leader of a PDP came hey, in order to prevent uh, one party system. Meanwhile, he's already talking about 2027 election. When we are talking in, a, in America in advanced nations, once election is done, two years, you don't mention anything about the next election. You talk about checking the ruling party to know that they are doing the right thing. That's the only thing they think about in this country is election. Who told them that Nigerians are talking about 2027 elections? They're talking to survive this corrupt APC government that is inflicting unimaginable pain on them. If you have electricity in your house, I don't have it in my house. For the last two days, I was in darkness. And if you have money to go and buy fuel at 600 and something, I don't. So my wonderful wife and child will be in darkness. And you know what it means when you want to talk to your wife when the heat is too much. You understand the social implication. Now, so it, what I'm saying is that this country should be talking about governance and administration. Are there other layers? The opposition. Beyond the opposition. You know, I was coming to mm. say there is nothing like one party system now. Mm. Are you aware that in the House of Rep, when they came in, opposition members were more in number mm. than the ruling Put party. together, yeah. Put together. Can you imagine in the Senate? PDP rushed to take the post that ought to be for the level. How can they understand at this level that the APC wants to divide them so that they can use them? And they think they are clever. You see, greed, insatiability amongst the opposition, that is what is going to do them in. I don't like shifting blame. Success and excuses don't go together. Labour Party and PDP should not be blaming APC for their own ineptitude and incompetence. You're coming out to say, just like I'm sorry to say, it, some leaders will come. Hey, Western democracy is not working for us. This and, that is not true. Have you raised this issue as a key member of the Labour Party within the ranks of the uh, party, within the hierarchy of the party, I mean? I wouldn't want to tell you the things mm. I do and the things I do not do within our party. It's an internal affairs of our party. Mm. And you want me to come out publicly to discuss it. That is not ingenious about you. Thank you. Okay, uh, because they may accuse you of uh, being anti-party. <laughs> you know the usual thing here. Do you look at me as a man who is drunk with the ambition for power? Let me tell you, I am a man of truth. And I will say the truth at all times. It is only the truth that brings solution. I'm not interested in position. I will say the truth even if it drops me of position. Because what I'm interested in is bringing solutions to Nigerian problem. And you're telling me anti-party. What is anti-party? When the ruling party was not doing well, I was shouting. When I was in APC, I sat down here with uh, Benga. And I was telling them, APC, that you have failed in security. Mm. And that this borrowing is going to land us into problem. I was in APC then. And now, I am in Labour Party. And you want me, when they do what is not good, I'll start singing hallelujah. I am not interested in that. And when I say something, I'm a man that is willing and understands the consequences and I'm willing to pay for the consequences. What are you telling me? Nigeria is going down. Mm. And you're busy in the National Assembly struggling for a car with the ruling corrupt party. And you, your own party says you shouldn't go in and you're going in. Let me tell you why I became very annoyed. I was thinking maybe there is a way that they were raising their voice behind the scene. And I'm like, okay, since That's using opposition. backdoor channels. Good. I said, okay, maybe in the opposition they have their strategy. Until my brother Tony Woye confronted the senior president. And I'm like, oh, so you know this is possible. You know it is your right. You know what he told the senior president? We are elected like you are. Absolutely correct. We are not your slaves. Absolutely correct. Now, why didn't you use this all this while when the welfare of the Nigerian people that put you there is involved? Now, why have you come out with such level of venom? Because they took the position, the leadership position, which you ought to get. So it's all about your own aggrandizement. How do we get back to the uh, drawing board for the opposition? Uh, is it the, how do we re-engineer to achieve better success? Is it in the way they choose their leaders? 
Is it in access to funds? Is it uh, a capacity issue? First of all, if you come out of Egypt and you not purge yourself from the spirit of Egypt, even when you are in the wilderness, you will not see the manna coming from heaven. You'll be yearning for the melon that is in Egypt. Forgetting that when you were in Egypt, you were a slave. I think the opposition, some of them that came from the ruling party, they have become used to the layer of power and resources. That that is what they focus on, even when they are now in opposition. So the the first thing you have to do is to purge yourself from the corruptive tendencies of the ruling class. Whoever denies Nigeria the fact that their leadership is corrupt is not being honest. So you have to purge yourself that. Then you have to refocus your mind on what is your intention in politics because eventually your intention will guide your actions. Like me, I have never had any territorial or material resources mentality coming into politics or to make fame or to make money. I've already had those things in a commensurate manner that will sustain me whenever I am moving in the world of politics. So you have to purge your mind from such insatiable search for power and money. And when the individual is unable when, to do it, yes. where was the role of the party? The party should discipline. And you have to do it without caring about but the consequences. Unfortunately, we are not seeing it. That is why the party should also be held responsible. The reason PDP has not come back to leadership is indiscipline. Indiscipline. If PDP had obeyed its own constitution in 2023, they would have thrown APC to the dustbin. Now, is there a possibility? Some people are mooting a measure of the opposition as a way of making it stronger and to counter the big influence of the government. Is that a priority? Is that, that is, an um, alternative? Yes, that is a very, very welcome development. I would rather like to use the word coalition. The brand name PDP is gone because you can see <laughs> present day PDP. Governor Wike, I don't know whether he's a member of APC or PDP. He says he's a member of PDP. Thank God you use what he says. Mm. Because PDP is opposition. Is he in opposition to the government? So I'm confused. You can help me. I do not lay claim to knowing everything. Weakest political stand in Nigeria, I don't know what it is. Somebody should help me. Whether it's APC or PDP, I don't know. Whether it is the voice of Jacob, hand of Esau, I don't know. But what I'm saying is, is this exactly mirrors what PDP is now. I don't know whether PDP is APC or PDP. So that brand name is gone. Because if a man so central is still claiming his PDP and nothing is happening to him, then what is PDP then? I don't know whether PDP is a ruling So a coalition yes. would help to change the situation? Absolutely. In the sense Major, that you have uh, yes. alliance, the most loose form. No. Uh, you no. have a coalition. Now, when you say so, major, then you have major yes, that we saw the APC uh, uh, execute good. in 2013, yes. I guess. When you say major, hmm. there might be a lot of people in APC that wants to join a new thing. They may not want to merge. But when you say coalition, hmm. then you determine. It may not just be a party. For me, a new party should be formed that will give everybody looking for a new Nigeria. When you say new Nigeria, it's not about... So, you know, giving birth to a new party, what yes. happens to the other ones? They die and go away. People don't want to hear certain names. And but I'm telling you who, the truth. Who are those that will populate this new party? Is he not uh, the product of no. this party that will wither away, that will move over to that the new party? That is why it's a coalition. Mm -hmm. When you do a coalition, whoever is the head of any organization determines how it goes. When you do a coalition and you start by picking men of unquestionable integrity to head the new coalition, then whoever is coming who you cannot stop the person from coming will now take a cue from the new set of leadership that will appear to Nigeria 
that these people are now coming to bring a new thing. Because without Nigerians being sure that there is a new thing, nobody will even go to vote. Because they will tell you their vote will not count. And they will tell you not for these same old people that would, they will risk their life. So there will be a need for a new breath. Of fresh air. New generation politicians generation. that the military tried to bring in the other time? No. The military tried to decree it into existence. And when you use that, you are bringing only your own people to come and take over. President Babangida said, we know the people that will not succeed us. But we don't know the people that will succeed us. My dear, if you know the people that will not succeed you, you automatically know the people that will, if you know the people that will not succeed you, you automatically know the people that will succeed you. So that tells you the, <laughs> how manipulated, that's why it's called Maradona. You know, so he said, I do not know the people that will succeed me, but I know the people that will not succeed me. Mm. So this is a contradiction that cannot just hold on because it can't approbate and reprobate. So what I'm saying is that it has to evolve and you can't stop anybody from joining but you can stop somebody from being corrupt after being joined by the exemplary leadership of the leadership of that coalition. So it means what you're opening the door for are young yes. people. Very well. People who have not been actively involved in politics. No. People who are showing greater interest now. Yes. yes. Young people, mm -hmm. it can still have old people. But who, let me tell you, Nigeria is the only country where experience in holding political office should work against you, not in your favor. In what way? What experience has all these political office holders have? What, what, what is, the experience they have is how to be corrupt and how to manipulate the system so that they won't be caught. Otherwise, why are we moving into extinction economically, politically? And our military, you can see how even ragtag Terrorist organizations are harassing our ministry, our military. We have also seen how the military the has said? been making gaining grounds. You know what the chief of the defense staff said? Killing and maiming the terrorists. No, listen to me. Hmm. The chief of the defense staff said, these people are not helping us. When we catch a terrorist... That's referring to the judiciary. Good. Referring to the system. Okay, you want to... Because somebody has to, somebody has to hmm. arrest the terrorist. Hmm. He said, when we hand them over, the next day, we are hearing that that same terrorist has been freed. So this so is a judicial delivery system. It justice is a, delivery system. Good. You can put it that way. The criminal that, that justice the delivery system. Yes. Good. Why I can't put it to the judiciary is that what the prosecutor brings to the mm -hmm. judge, the judge doesn't go to the field to go and pick somebody. It's not a father Christmas. Good. So what the prosecutor brings to him is what he's going to handle on. I am telling you, we have one of the best set of judges in terms of brilliance. But the political system, the system they find themselves, and this is not exonerating them. That is why it is mostly in our electoral cases that you find all kinds of funny decisions and funny judgments. Telling you the hand of that political class that needs to be changed right from the top. If we can get a good president for eight years, Nigeria will be transformed because of the enormous powers the Constitution bestows on the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Young people who said, uh, here is Dr. Konkwa encouraging us to uh, come into the fray, yes. play my active role, yes. form, possibly form a political party, yes. but the, the, it's still within the Nigerian environment yes. where all those factors are present. How can they navigate this landmines? Because you need only one person to change the system. You needed only one man, Adam, to put the whole world into sin. You needed only one man, Jesus Christ, to deliver the world from sin. We are looking for just one man. We just missed a golden opportunity in 2023 of having a pitobi that has been held. Can you imagine going through such opposition and nobody has been able to bring out anything to incriminate you? So we just missed an opportunity, meaning we're getting closer to it. It's not about Obi. It's about a new Nigeria. I would work for, you know there were problem. When you go to Northwest, they will give us the worst to rule us. I wish when you go to Northwest, they would give us their best. When you go to Northeast, let them give us their best. That is what we need in this country. 
I don't care about religion. I don't care about ethnicity. I care about the people that will deliver the dividends of democracy, no matter where they are from. But we must know that in a multi-ethnic and multi-religious society, you have to form a way of including everybody to create a sense of belonging, command national loyalty, and ensure that no sector is marginalized and no sector dominates the other. So in as much as you're looking for the best from every zone, you must make sure that the leadership circulates around. This is my policy about Nigeria. Okay, you spoke of, it, of the need for a strong opposition. Yes. Uh, it works better in a cabinet system of government, which we ran, operated 1960 to 66, yes. where the opposition is, is even paid uh, some allowances and as well, recognized as part. Do we go back to that system? Is the problem of the president being too powerful, wielding so much power and influence? Is it the one that is uh, weakening the opposition, making members of the opposition run away from their party and uh, sending application uh, letters to the uh, ruling party? Bring the best system in the whole world and bring corrupt men to run it. That system will collapse. Our problem is not parliamentary presidential. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. I prefer presidential system of government to parliamentary for our nation. You forgot that in parliamentary, they have two heads. Make a man anything in Nigeria, just call him the head. And you will see that his expenses will be like that of a king. We, in parliamentary system, you have a president. You have a prime minister, and you call two of them heads. And unfortunately for you, you say one is just ceremony. That's head of state and head of government. Good. And unfortunately for you in Africa, you called one and told him your own is ceremonial. Mm. Every day you'll be having ceremony. Nanda Zikiwe didn't do that when he was in power as head of state. So what did he do? I'm asking you to help me. This is Africa. And I'm telling you, when you create anything and call anybody anything, he will use it to plunder the resources. Just look at members of the National Assembly. 165 million naira. Well, we are not One talking car. about this money, though uh, which, the which, National which Assembly money? has not come clean. About Good. On the exact figure, but I hope one day they will come out clean. And Why have they not come in? So that when people make reference... Now, the can... presidential yacht mm. I had is already in Nigeria. Mm and yet not appropriated. The president of Nigeria chose members of his party, card-carrying members, to be national commissioners of INEC. Did you see any opposition person in National Assembly shout about it? If they have not failed you, they have failed me. Then tomorrow you will say INEC is compromised. Why wouldn't they be compromised? A ruling party will find a way to win election, even in America, if there's no checks and balance. So we should push for... Uh, amendment of the Constitution to take away the powers from the president if the opposition uh, are unable to check those now, excesses. This is why I prefer presidential system for our country. Parliamentary system goes down by mere vote of no confidence. And the head of government is gone. In Israel, they had five elections, national elections in two years, and yet they've not achieved stability. And you saw what is going on in Israel. Do you think if we cannot organize election very well, once in four years, you think we'll be able to organize five elections, national elections, in two years? So the issue here is that our presidential system is good. We simply need men of integrity and character to run it. Then we need to reduce the amount and the number of our elected house of, or let's say the legislature. Unicamera, one House, there is one be, chamber. There won't be anything wrong with that if we see that our budget is not carrying it. And the reason our budget is not carrying it is because it cannot carry it. It's because of corruption, it's because of wastages. Every four years, you're buying exotic, imported mm. cars to these people. You change their furniture, you change a poor country. So they are making it unnecessarily expensive. You will buy food for the president. And you buy food for the wife. Is Nigerian political system dividing asunder what God has put together? Okay, you're making budget to the first lady. To do what? An unelected person, not created by the law. Then you are making budget for that office. To do what? 
That money is there to be eaten and squandered. What is the duty? You allocate money for duties, for functions. Okay.